happy to partner with the library. Welcome everyone to Dakota County Financial Empowerment. We are pleased to present to you this training from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau or CFPB called Behind on Bills. This is the first online presentation Financial Empowerment is partnering with the library to do, so we hope that you will have patience with us if we have some bugs we need to work out. I hope you're comfortable and that you have your needed essentials nearby. You may find it helpful to have a pen and paper on hand to take notes. Please do what you need to do to make yourself comfortable and care for yourself during this presentation. Feel free to post questions in the chat box at any time. <clears throat> Behind on Bills is part of a suite of trainings called Your Money, Your Goals. This is the, the booklet. This training contains eight hands-on tools that can help people to track and monitor income and spending, understand how to better align the timing of income and expenses, identify goals and develop action plans, prioritize bills and spending, understand your rights and responsibilities if you are contacted by a debt collector, and access digital and local resources. This disclaimer lets you know that Dakota County is putting on this training with the CFPB's materials. The views expressed today are not endorsed by the CFPB. The CFPB created the training and it has been adapted by Dakota County Financial Empowerment for its use today. Meet your trainers for today. My name is Heidi. There's also Kate and Mel attending in the meeting with us today. We are the Dakota County Financial Empowerment Program staff. Prior to the pandemic, we were located in the Northern Service Center in West St. Paul. We held meetings in our offices in or in the Dakota County Libraries. Currently, we are meeting with clients by Zoom or by phone. We can be reached by phone, by email, or you can request an appointment online through the Dakota County website. And you can also search personal finance. So you can see there is now a request appointment button and uh, the phone number in our direct email is included. Please note that this is an instructional presentation and you will be able to follow along through the slides. You can pick up a paper copy of the tool at the following library branches. And again, this is the paper copy that you'll be looking for um, at the Inver Glen Library, Pleasant Hill, Wentworth, and Westcott li library locations. If you would like a paper copy mailed to you, please go ahead and include that in the chat. And we can get back to you um, with that documentation later. You you should have received an email with the link to the digital copy prior to this presentation. You don't need to open the online version for this training as you can just follow along with the slides. Please submit questions again in the chat box as we go and there will be opportunity at the end for more discussion. Whoops, getting faster. Here is a quick introduction to the CFPB and the Dakota County Financial Empowerment Programs. The CFPB's mission is to make markets for consumer financial products and services work for the people in America. Part of how the CFPB does this is by working to ensure that consumers get the information they need to make financial decisions they believe are best for themselves and their families, that prices are clear up front, that risks are visible, and that nothing is buried in the fine print. By empowering consumers to make informed financial decisions behind on bills aligns with the CFPB's larger mission and with the mission of a wide range of other organizations, such as our financial empowerment department that aim to support economically vulnerable people. To achieve its mission, the CFPB works to empower consumers. They create tools, answer common questions, and provide tips that help consumers navigate their financial choices and shop for the deal that works best for them. They provide enforcement. The CFPB takes action against predatory practices and companies that violate the law. The CFPB also encourages financial education and capability from childhood through retirement, publishes research, educates financial companies about their responsibilities. If you haven't already been on their website, it is full of fantastic educational information. What is financial empowerment with Dakota County? As you participate in this training today, you will learn skills to help you with your finances. Please keep in mind that if this information is not a good fit for you right now, it may be helpful for you to share with your friends or family who live in Dakota County or anywhere else, but Dakota County Financial Empowerment provides services for people who live in Dakota County, um, or this is good for your use in the future. We love referrals, so if you know someone who could use a little financial coaching, please refer them to Financial Empowerment. 
Dakota County is the only county in the state of Minnesota and one of two in the United States that offers free financial counseling. This includes one-on-one -on -one financial counseling, financial education, and community outreach. We teach how to use tools, resources, and financial skills to build confidence in order to empower you to make positive changes in your life. I like to say if you have financial barriers, you contact us and we can help you get a plan in place to overcome those. Behind on bills. Now for a detailed look at behind on bills, but we're gonna call it Bob for short for today. Bob is a set of tools that have been developed and combined to help anyone who may be facing challenges and making ends meet, especially during this worldwide pandemic. Its tools and information can help people to identify goals and develop action plans, prioritize bills and spending, track and monitor income and spending, understand how to better align timing of income and expenses, understand their rights and responsibilities if they're contacted by collectors, and access digital and local resources. Bob is structured as a toolkit. We will cover each section of the toolkit today. You may find some of the tools are just what you need to address your financial concerns, or maybe you want to come back to them at a later time, or you can bring this tool out when you're dealing with a specific financial challenge. The table of content shows that the tools are broken down into three sections and are color coded. The blue green tools can be used to help build a clear picture of your income and spending, also referred to as budgeting. The yellow tools can be used to think about goals, identify ways to increase income and cut expenses, also referred to as reevaluating the budget to add income or cut expenses. And the red tools can be used for immediate challenges and needs, how to budget in tough times and how to deal with debt. The structure of the tool is set up like this. The cover page is with the tool description, as you'll see here. The inside fold is the worksheet here, and the backup page is a step further here. So let's get started. The income tracker can help you categorize your sources of income, resources, and build a picture of the timing and amounts of your funds. Let's do a poll in the chat box. Please name some of the different sources of income. And Kate will take over from here for us. Hi, thank you so much. Uh, thinking as a group together, can we think of some ideas of what different incomes that we all have coming in and what that may look like? So some of the things that I kind of think about is um, different types of self-employment um, that you may have or also um, any type of uh, benefits that you receive every month. Those are some general things that we start thinking about when we start referring to different types of income coming in. Here's the cheat, anyone wants? Oh, great, a great example, alimony. So alimony may be income that's coming in. Exactly, thank you for that one, Ben. Anybody else have any other ideas about income um, coming that we normally don't think about? Social security, yes, that's another good one. Social security income. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Income often varies from week to week or may be received infrequently. This worksheet allows you to track income over the course of a month to make that variability easier to manage. When setting up a budget, it's important to work with the same math each month. Let's take a closer look at that. What is the difference between gross and net income? I like to use this image of greens because gross is the amount of pay before deductions are taken out and net is what you actually bring home. A good way to remember the difference is to think about raw versus cooked greens because there is a big difference even though they're the same item. I know this slide is very busy. Don't worry, it's just an example to see how many different ways people get paid. There are several different pay periods to consider. Using an annual salary of 4,000 $40,000 a year, you would, how you get paid, how you get paid makes a difference of how much you'll have to budget with each month. Do you get paid once a month? Is it a set day of the month that you can count on? And if so, you have a consistent monthly income of $3,333. We're going to continue using these numbers throughout the presentation today. Do you get paid weekly? That's 52 pay periods a year. Eight months of the year, you receive $3,076. 
four months of the year, you receive $3,845. And you can see down here in the light of the different colored boxes. Do you get paid semi-monthly, such as the 15th and the 30th? You have consistent monthly income of $3,333 per month to work with. That's the peach highlighted boxes. Do you get paid every other week? This is 26 times a year. So 10 months of the year, you receive $3,076. In two months, you receive 4,614, the blue highlighted boxes. So you can see how you're paid makes a big difference about how to budget throughout the year. Once you have your income figured out, you can fill out the income tracker. When you're ready to fill out the income tracker, you can do one month at a time or photocopy this tool and use it for a year at a time. You will fill out the table with the amounts you receive from your primary job, a government program, disability benefits, financial support, and other sources that you identify, such as child support or tribal benefits or alimony. Thanks, Ben. Do you split a cell phone bill with a family member? If they give you money, that additional income needs to be added into your budget. After filling in the amounts expected from each source, total up each week's income. You can identify payments that are predictable by circling them. This income you can count on to build into your budget to pay your bills. You can line up due dates to match. If it's income that is not predictable, such as child support, your budget should not include that income. You can work out how to best use, use those funds later. Now that you have a clear picture of when your income comes in and when it arrives, we can move on. This is that step, a step further tool. This tool includes prompts to help you reflect on your income. Here are some things to think about. Have you looked at your income like this before? Weekly, bi-weekly, semi-monthly? Do you have more money at different times of the month than you realized? Once you've worked out your income, there will be some additional things for you to think about. Now that you know when it comes in, you have a better control of when it goes out. Let's move on to the next tool. Where does my money go? The spending tracker can help build a picture of where your money goes. I find this is the hardest part of budgeting. So this tool is very handy. Use this tool to track, analyze, identify, and set achievable goals to help keep you on track spending the amounts that they spend, but also about what they spend it on. This is where you can identify if you have spent your money where you wanted it to or where you had to. How you spend your money is a choice that you make. I want to be able to say no to some things because I don't want to do something, not because I don't have the means. I get to control where my money goes. So do you. This worksheet is a portion of the spending tracker that provides 12 categories for spending, including an other category. The rows of the table are the weeks and the month. I find it helpful to use a bank statement each month to fill this out. If you use cash, you'll want to keep your receipts or fill it in as you go in the month. This is something you will fill out after our class today. If you want help filling it out, you can schedule an appointment with Financial Empowerment and we will work with you one-on-one -on -one with your budget. Once you have filled in the weekly, week by week table, the total, total the cost in the category, and then total for spending during the month. Once you take a look at where your money is going, you may be surprised by the amounts that you spend in certain categories. Do you spend less on groceries than you expected? Will you see that you spend more towards the end of the month by eating out? This tool also gives you the power to identify the changes that you want to make, such as eating out less and paying more towards your debts. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? You will be able to ask yourself if there are any surprises about the categories or the two totals. Again, this is something that we can work with you one-on-one -on -one with financial empowerment appointments. Does your spending align with your personal priorities? That's something else that we can talk to you about. You'll want to compare your income from the income tracker with your spending. If you're spending more than your income, this tool will help you identify where you can cut back. Let's do a chat box poll. Do you think you have a surplus at the end of the month after completing this tool? Go ahead and submit your answers in the chat box now. As we we're putting in our thoughts in the chat, I just wanted to go back really quick to our last question. We had a really good um, source of income that many of us don't think about, which is tax refunds. 
And that is an excellent point. And there's a lot of uh, really good thinking that we can put forward about what we want to do with that source of income once a year when it comes in. Excellent example. So we're getting some feedback now that's coming in in the chat. And it looks like that um, uh, individuals right now are saying no surplus identified right now. So yeah, what are some things that we can think about doing, Heidi, when we see that we're not having a surplus at the end of the month? Thank you, Kate. That's great. Yep, there are many different tools that you can use to help adjust your budget to make sure that you're spending your money where you want to go. Oftentimes with financial counseling, we talk to people about making sure that you're not losing money by paying for late fees and or um, fines and fees that you wouldn't have to pay if you were paying your bills on time. Sometimes it can be very hard to get on track, but that's something that we can partner with you to make sure that you're on track doing to keep those funds. There are lots of other tips and tricks of the trade that we'd be happy to meet with you one-on-one -on -one for. Okay, so if you have a surplus at the end of the month, what would you do with it? Would you apply it to your savings? Would you put it into, uh, apply it towards your debt? Um, those are different decisions that you get to make when you're at the point where you're having that extra money in your account when you have a surplus at the end of the month. And that's always our goal with financial empowerment. If you have a deficit, what do you do about it? So that's where we would also talk to you about how to avoid that for next month. A step further for this tool can help you identify areas where you may want to do to decrease spending. Only you get to decide what is a want versus a need for you. If you don't have enough money for your needs, you may have to consider looking at what you spend on wants. A good example of this is eating out. Most Americans spend more money than they realize eating out, but there's a give and take on that. If you're running your kids between sporting events and band concerts, you might not have the time to cook dinner. So a drive through is your answer. It often comes down to time. I find it easier said than done, but meal planning is one of the best tricks for saving money on food. Let's do another poll, box, poll in the chat box. Do you have any money saving tips that you would like to share about meals? Please, please add them to the chat box now. This is an area that I love to learn from our clients on during sessions about their ideas that they have and ways that they are saving money. Um, on meals every month. Um, Heidi and I like to talk a lot about our community partners um, that we have within Dakota County on how to help people save money on groceries. We'd love for you to give us a call and we can talk to you more about that too. Oh, I love Ben's example. He says leftovers. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> leftovers not only help your budget, but they also help save you some time too. Yes, buy a groceries every other, or every week or every other week. So keep those trips to the grocery store down so you're just going once or, or less often. I like that too. Yes, use coupons, shop ads, use programs to get cash back. I like that. That's a really good idea as well. Lots of good feedback coming in. Wonderful, thank you. If you know you're going to need to eat out certain nights of the week, build it into your budget. And that's one of the biggest tips that we can give you so that you know that you're able to eat out without any guilt of eating out because it's built into your budget. So you get to spend your money where you want to. It's your budget, your money, you decide how you spend it. As long as you set goals to stay within your budget and it allows you to stay on track, remove the guilt from spending money on things such as eating out. <clears throat> the bill calendar is my favorite tool. I like to call this portion of a budget the fixed expenses because they usually have a set due date and amount so that you can plan ahead to pay based on your pay dates. You must have, whoops, you may have more control on paying your monthly bills than you realize. Does paying your bills on time give you anxiety because the money is going out of your account or does it give you a sense of accomplishment that you've paid a bill on time and it's no longer a concern. These are the different types of things that people often ask us when we're talking with them in session, when they share with us how they feel when they're paying their bills. This worksheet is part of the tool that helps you visualize when your bills are due and when other expenses will occur. 
After this presentation, you will fill in the list in the column with your providers and the due dates and amounts. Oops, sorry here. Steps one through three will help you take stock of your bills and then mark up the calendar to show the payment date for each bill. Step three will give you several options on how to fill out this calendar. Do your bills, bill providers draft the money out of your account? Do you pay by auto pay through your bank or do you mail in checks? It's important to identify what option works for you. We can help you determine that as well. So make an appointment with Financial Empowerment if you'd like further support. You can add your pay dates to see, to see how the timing of your income lines up with the timing of your bills when using a bill calendar. Add up the total bills for each week and compare the amounts to your paydays. If you're heavy in any given week, contact your bill provider to change the due dates. Some people find it helpful to put their bills on the calendar and then mark them off each month when that bill is paid. This will also help you track when you have not paid a bill. This is, a fill, this is the fillable calendar that you can find online from the CFPB at files, excuse me, if I could get Kate or um, someone, Mel, to go ahead and put that in the chat box. But this is an online tool that I grabbed from the CFPB. This is, example is for Betty, who gets paid on the 15th and the 30th. Notice the bill due dates are spread throughout the month. If Betty gets paid on October 30th, $1,600, and 1765 are due in bills before her next pay period, she would not be able to cover all of the bills and will have no other money for other expenses. So the question would be, does she pay late fee every month for the bills she can't pay on time? So you can see here that the bills are lined up and then over here is the total amount that are due each week with the two different pay periods. This example, you can see that I have um, helped Betty change the due dates of each of her bills. This way, when she gets paid on the 15th, the $1,600, excuse me, on the 30th of the month prior, she'll have the $1,600 and can pay her rent on the 1st. And that leaves her other money to spend for other expenses, such as food, gas, or miscellaneous spending. The next time she gets paid, her bills are due, and she's got the money to pay it with money left over for other expenses. One of the other things that we like to do to help people with their bills is if you have bills that are inconsistent, like your energy bill, we can help you contact the provider to get on, a, on an average bill pay. This is an example of looking at how, your pay, how to pay your rent on a bi-weekly pay schedule. Bi-weekly pay dates can be tricky throughout the year because they move. Most rental contracts give you a grace period. Your rent may be due on the 1st, but it's not considered late until the 5th. Looking at a year of pay periods gives you the advanced knowledge of which month to pay the pay date that will not fall before the fifth so that you can use the last pay day of the prior month to pay from that pay period. So looking at this example, you can see that we'll pay February on February 2nd, March on March 3rd, April on April 1st, May on April 29th, June on May 27th, and so on. A step further for this tool provides some additional ideas for using the bill calendar as a money management tool, balancing act, other expenses, and top of your mind. It also gives you a place where you can identify one thing you'll try next month. The goal setting tool asks you to think about change and helps you to track your follow through. Some people are really good at setting goals, but not at the follow through. Some people set goals and start to follow through, but don't finish, so don't get the reward of completing the tool, the goal, excuse me. It can be helpful to start small. This worksheet is very personal. You may find you need time to sit and think before you answer. And if you come back to this tool next month, your answers may change. This will help you reflect on the four prompts written across the top of each tool to fill in. So here, I filled this out for myself. One thing that you're proud of, I chose, I make Christmas cookies every year. In slim years, I make less, but I still do it. One promise to yourself, I will get out of bed 15 minutes early and stretch. That's a hard one, but it's a promise to myself that I try to follow. One thing that you would like to change, I want to walk more every day. And by identifying that as a goal, it helps me know that I can come back to it. And a dream that you have for yourself, 
I want to retire and go camping in every federal and state campground in the United States. So you can see that these goals and these promises don't necessarily have to be financial, but just things that you can identify for yourself. The who can help me prompt at the bottom of the tool is a great place to name a friend, family member, or community-based organization or other source of support that's relevant to your goals. The date to complete prompt challenges you to give yourself a deadline for each of these actions. What is a SMART goal? Is this a little bit off? There we go. Have you heard of setting SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-framed? Here's an example of a goal. I want to have $75 for new running shoes. This goal states what it will take to be successful, save $75. A poll, let's do another chat box poll. What's missing from this goal to make it a SMART goal? As we're thinking a little bit more in depth about the SMART goal, I just wanted to mention that we had really good chat feedback in regards to way to save money with food. And we had the suggestion of also is utilizing our community resources as in uh, 360 communities, uh, the open door neighbors. Awesome. Yes. And if you need help getting connected with any of those, Heidi and I can certainly help you do that. Um, so yeah, we have really good feedback, you know, like what was missing from that goal time frame. Yes, time again, another one time. Yes, we're missing that time part of the smart goal. Heidi, tell us a little bit more how you could integrate time into that goal. Um, giving the time frame to decide how long you want to make it um, so that you can achieve it in a set period of time is, is how that works. So for this particular goal, is it specific? Yes, I want $75. You'll know you've achieved it once you've got the $75. Is it measurable? Yes, I know when I have $75. Is it attainable? This is something that you can decide is, is it something that you can fit into your budget? And if it's not, you might need to adjust your goal. Realistic, only you can decide if it does fit in that budget. Should you set it for $50 or maybe 100? Time frame. Nope, this goal did not include how long it would take to get that set to, to know where I'm finished. So if I were to change it to say, I want to save $75 for running shoes in two months, you have your time frame to know if you've achieved it within that two month time period. It's always okay to change any of those as you need to go to make sure that you are being successful in setting that SMART goal. If you say in two months and you get paid weekly, that's that will help you to identify that you need to set aside $9.50 per week to reach your goal. Okay. A step further for this tool involves identifying concrete steps towards aspirations that were identified on the worksheet part of the tool. For each step, there's a space to write resources needed and a date to complete those steps. You can set a goal, but flushing out the steps to make it happen can take work and finding the sources to help you as well. Sometimes setting a goal takes many steps to achieve it. Brainstorming solutions can help you find out if that goal is obtainable and scheduling an appointment with Dakota County Financial Empowerment to help you figure out those steps. So an example would be, I want to move out of my parents' house in six months. What does it take to actually be able to do that? So the goal of moving out is number one, but let's work backwards. Do you have the um, help to move your stuff? Have you saved up to pay the first month of rent and deposit? Have you found an apartment that you can afford based on your income? Do you have a job? Do you have transportation to get through there? So fleshing out the different steps that you need to address in order to reach that goal can be helpful. This tool on short-term strategies can help you think about ways that you can increase your income or access additional resources. You can also use this tool to identify decreased spending. Okay, here comes a poll um, that we'll, we'll need to launch here. Have you considered a side gig to bring in more income?
Okay, so it looks like most of the people that are participating today have thought about, um, whoops, here we go, we want to share the results, have thought about getting a side gig to bring in income. The worksheet portion on this tool helps you put, put you on the path to more money in and less money out. The left side is about income, bringing in more income. The prompts are open-ended, inviting you to list skills that you have, programs that you can consider, and other options for generating income. We're going to do another poll again in a moment, but there's one thing that I did not incorporate into this training is there's all kinds of help right now through COVID funding and also through the different um, financial assistance programs that if you're not sure if you should apply or would be eligible, please reach out to us through financial empowerment and we can help you um, navigate that process as well. So here's another chat poll. Do you have any suggestions on way to bring in more money based on skills that you've identified for yourself? Kate, I'll let you run that chat again, please. Awesome. So, um, I really like how um, when we were talking about the last chat, we'll talk about it a little bit as we get going on this one, but um, I really liked how we had someone mention prioritizing uh, when we were talking about SMART goals as not only is the time missing, but yes, is prioritizing that, making that um, important to you. That's awesome. So we're getting really good feedback coming in. It looks like um, we have um, some ideas on uh, starting that side gig. Um, and I have a really good example of saving all, all of your change. Oh, yeah, as a, as a, instead of necessarily uh, adding a side gig, but yes, adding, uh, saving all that uh, extra change that you may get. Um, that's a really good idea. I have kids that save throughout the year, the little, you know, $5 they get from grandparents, and that really does add up for them. And it's a lot of fun. They kind of save it towards something big that they want as the year progresses. So I have a really awesome idea here it came in about selling items that you don't use anymore. So that not only uh, helps clear up space in your home, but also helps provide uh, income coming in as well. It's a great idea. I love that. We've had some really good feedback. Heidi, can you think of um, any other ideas that you can think of uh, for bringing in that additional income that we normally don't think about? We've had selling items that we don't use, saving that spare change. There's lots of different ideas. Thank you, Kate. Um, so yep, selling things such as if you're crafty on Etsy or um, selling things that you don't need like on Craigslist or things that you can make. But I would like to um, point out that Dakota County does have safe drop-off sites at each of the three main um, buildings. So if that's something that you're interested in selling things on Craigslist but you don't know where to meet people, a safe way is to do it in the Dakota County parking lots. Um, there's also consignment stores from anything from clothing and sporting equipments to um, children's things. Other um, side gigs could possibly be part-time jobs such as DoorDash, food deliveries, or being a personal shopper um, for different types of companies. You can also um, in increase your income by applying for public assistance. One of the the other things that um, often we don't talk about is to review your employer benefits. Do they offer discounts to services? Um, maybe a match 401k contribution. If your employer has a match 401k and you're not putting anything in, you're losing money. Um, and then are you paying for benefits you don't use? And I would be guilty of that. Uh, through Dakota County, I had signed up for the vision um, insurance, but I realized I was getting my um, vision exams every year through my regular primary care provider. And so I could drop that and save that extra money. So even just reviewing your benefits could be a way to put more money in your pockets. The right hand side of this tool is about expenses, spending less money. You can identify fees that you can avoid, utilities that you can reduce, and plans and memberships that you can change or cancel or habits that you can change. The question in each, each section can help you to reconsider expenses that add to the strain on your financing. Spending less money can have a huge impact on your budget. This may include paying bills on time to avoid late fees, service fees, or applying for discounts. And Kate and I love to share all of the different discounts and resources within Dakota County. So depending on what your income is, you may be eligible for energy assistance or um, landline assistance. 
There's so many different options out there. So we're gonna ask for another participation in the chat box, please. We'll stop here to ask, do you have any tips or tricks that you like to use to save money? Back to you, Kate. Thanks so much, Heidi. This is um, where I love learning from clients that we have. They often have ideas that I have not heard of, and um, especially when we're working with quite a few people every week, it's a lot of fun for us to learn about how people are um, using tips to, um, to save money. I love this feedback, cut the cable. Yes, um, <laughs> that is something we recently have done as well. We did, we cut the cable in our house and are using streaming services instead. Um, make it instead of buying it. I love that too. Yes, um, that's the one thing about um, the pandemic. A lot of us have gotten a little bit more in touch with um, our, craft, our craft side and are making things that we normally would not have tried. It's a great opportunity to try to, um, to learn to do some more things like that. Great feedback. Um, Heidi, I know that you are probably one of my top experts in how to save money. Uh, do you have any tips or tricks you'd like to share with us on how you save money? Oh, before we go, I have one more um, okay. that came in is utilizing the recycling zone or reuse zone. Yes, I didn't realize that. Good job. Um, I didn't realize that they did have items for reuse at the recycling zone. That's awesome. Thank you for that one coming in. Oh, here's another good one. Uh, canceling subscriptions you don't um, read. Yes. 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 That's yeah. awesome. So um, that, yeah, that I recently went through uh, my apps and uh, made sure that I didn't have any subscriptions to anything that I wasn't using in my, in my phone as well. And I'm, um, so that's another idea is yes. to think about what you are reading, what you're not reading, what you're using for those apps and what you're not using for those apps. Um, we have another one called, uh, that has thought of an idea called tryfreecycle.org. I've not tried that one. <laughs> See, we're always learning. We're always learning from individuals that we're working with. So that's great. Thank you for the new one there. Yes. I have to research you. that. So how I about am, you, Heidi? What do you yeah. like to do? I am definitely that person. I see a penny on the side of the road and I'm going to bend down and pick that penny up. I definitely um, recycle everything that I possibly can from grass cycling to recycling to um, recycling personal products by taking them to thrift stores or buying things at thrift stores. My favorite thing in the world is thrift stores and yard sales. So I am definitely all about saving those landmines, landfills, excuse me, and um, reusing things. I just today saw um, on a Facebook post that someone had said, hey, this year for the holidays, post here if there's something that you're wanting or needing, and we'll see if someone has it that they're willing to get rid of. And I couldn't believe how quickly that was already being really uh, transpiring. Someone was asking for Christmas ornaments. Someone said, I just got rid of a bunch. Let me, you know, sorted them out. So that's definitely another way to, to be able to save money. Um, again, Kate and I have lots of resources between dropping that cable um, and doing the streaming and or um, other resources. Of course, the library is full of all kinds of movies and things that you can borrow for free. Um, so thank you so much for all of those tips and tricks, everybody. All right, a step further. For this tool, a step further involves identifying concrete steps towards aspirations that were identified in the worksheet part of the tool. Just like with goal setting, there may be steps you need to identify to reach those goals. Again, it's, so it's putting that step one, two, and three to get to it. All right, this is a hard one. Prioritizing bills tool can help you consider how to approach each bill if you cannot make all of your payments on time. Only you can decide what is a priority in your budget. For me, maintaining housing is my number one goal, but that does not mean it's yours, and that's okay. This tool can be very helpful for you to make decisions before you're in a crisis situation and are forced to make decisions that you're not ready to make. There are two versions of this worksheet. Whoops, excuse me here. This is the worksheet that you'll see if you're using the online tool, and this is the worksheet that you'll see if you're using the paper tool. This is designed to be completed in two steps. Identify your bills, and then you prioritize how you will pay them when you have the funds to do so. On the left-hand side of the page, you will take an inventory of the bills that you anticipate. The tool organizes these bills around four categories. Things I need to keep or get a job, insurance I need to pay for, things I need to stay housed and to keep the utilities connected, and obligations I need to pay. 
The tips below those last two categories point out some of the special concerns related to pay late payments on certain bills. Having listed your bills, you can then move on to the second step of this tool. You can reflect on your bills and whether or not you can cover them all and the consequences of late payments for certain bills. As a financial counselor, how I prior prioritize bills will be different from how most people look at them and how they're presented by the CFPB. This is how I pose some of these questions. If you don't pay your rent on time or pay your rent at all, what will happen? So right now, they have stopped all evictions, but eventually that will come back. Do you have a backup plan to where you'll live? What will happen if you don't have access to food? So if you don't have access to food, Kate and I have several different resources that we can refer you to for free food, discount food, and community meals Monday through Thursday, every night of Monday through Thursday throughout the month. What will, don't, what will happen if you don't pay your credit card? This is one of the biggest things that people come to us to talk to us about, and that's credit card debt. We'd be happy to identify different tricks with that as well to help support you with. What will happen if you don't pay child support or alimony? What will happen if you don't pay your car insurance? If you have a backup plan now for your bills and what you will do if the consequences of not paying them hits you, you can better address your, priority, your priorities. So that can be um, what happens if you lose your, your driver's license, if you don't pay your child support? What will happen if your wages are garnished if you have a judgment for not paying a credit card bill? These are things that Kate and I'd be happy to work with you on with one-on-one -on -one appointments. A step, feature, a step further features practical strategies prioritizing bills. Familiarize yourself with these strategies and the additional resources that are listed so that you can problem solve techniques prior to, while prioritizing when there is not enough money to pay all of your bills. There are some fantastic tips listed here. One that is not listed is financial empowerment. If you don't know what will happen, if you don't pay certain bills, we can talk you through it. We have resources to help you pay some bills depending on the bill and the circumstances. Please reach out to us to help support you if you're struggling to pay your bills. The tool on dealing with debt collectors helps you understand your rights, take steps to verify whether claims are valid, dispute claims for debts you do not owe, respond to claims for debts you do owe. Because debt collectors sometimes use pressure to get you to send in money, it's important that you understand those rights. If you have questions, please contact us. This is a huge part of our work. Much of the work we do around debt is education. Not all debt is bad debt. There are so many tips and tricks in the credit world that we love to share. To establish a strong, diverse credit report is to support a high credit score. This does not necessarily mean that you need to take out debt. There is a big difference between a debt collector and an original lender. It's important to know your rights about what a debt collector can do. That is found in the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. It's also important to know your rights when a lender that's found in the contract that you signed when you first took out the debt. If you don't have that contract, you can call and ask for another copy be sent to you. The rights listed on the front of this tool underneath the heading, Know Your Rights, are important if you've been contacted by debt collectors. If you are being contacted by debt collectors, of course, Kate and I would be happy to talk with you about that process. So this is um, the new version of the um, tool for the online if a debt collector contacts you, and this is the old one. So you'll see it's broken down from two to three categories. The worksheet portion of the tool provides guidance for dealing with debt collectors in three stages. Be sure, ask questions, and resolve. The tips under the heading be sure reflect important, the importance of confirming that you actually owe the debt and protecting yourself against erroneous and fraudulent debt collection especially in this time in the pandemic when um, different debt collectors may be contacting you and you don't know if it's yours or not. The tips under the heading Ask Questions involve gathering information on the debt, finding out whether, oops, go back to here, sorry, finding out whether the statute of limitations on the debt has expired and asking for specific specifics about the history of the debt and the involvement of the debt collector. Tips under Resolve help you make the most of your options when claims are legitimate. When you believe that the claims are not legitimate or accurate, this tool includes a form that you can complete, cut out, and mail to the debt collectors to dispute a claim. 
see that form at the far right of the worksheet below the dotted line. Financial empowerment can help you with letters as they are provided by the CFPB on their website and we can help you draft those um, to meet your specific needs. Ignoring a debt will not make it go away. If you want to know where the debt is in the life cycle of debt, you can pull your credit reports for free at annualcreditreport.com. You can do this once a year for each of the three main credit reporting agencies, Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian. During the pandemic though, you can actually pull them once a week. Searching for judgments on the court website can help get you prepared for an income withholding or bank levy from a creditor. If you're a recipient of public assistance, you can stop those collection actions for as long as you are on public assistance and up to 60 days after. If you have questions about that, please definitely reach out to us in Financial Empowerment to help you research that. The reverse side of the tool lists practical resources available to people that are dealing with debt collectors. Ask the CFPB answers new consumer questions and includes a database of answers to past questions. The CFPB has sample letters for debt collectors that can be used by consumers to respond to common challenges related to debt collectors. Submitting a complaint starts with the CFPB's process for investigating and resolving consumer issues. That can be a violation of your Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Debt counseling is available through nonprofit credit counselors like Financial Empowerment. And finally, consumers can find a lawyer through trusted networks that serve the economically vulnerable <laughs> clients. As soon as you hear that a person is being contacted by a debt collector, use the Dealing with Debt Collectors tool to help them through the phases of being sure, asking questions, and resolving the claim. The Dakota County Law Libraries have um, different types of clinics that can be used to help you also with your legal questions when it comes to consumer rights. Sometimes you may need more help. Financial Empowerment is equipped to help you find additional resources in Dakota County. The resource cards tool is designed to help you do just that. Using this tool, you can connect with people with the resources related to paying utility bills. Have you checked to see if you qualify for energy assistance, public assistance from Dakota County? Finding a job or benefits, contact the Workforce Center. Dealing with debt, call Financial Empowerment. Getting a response from banks and debt collectors, call Financial Empowerment. Finding a lawyer, contact the Dakota County Law Library and exploring for healthcare programs, the Minsure Lab. This tool can help you create those eight resource cards on, on topics that are important to you. Each includes both blank spaces for your local resources and referral ideas and some pre-filled resources that maybe provide relevant web addresses or phone numbers. The Dakota County webpage is full of additional resources. It's important to ensure that resources and referrals that you contact are a source of unbiased and high quality support. The questions found on the reverse side of this tool can be used to help you vet for resources. I recently heard a good quote that says, if you're not paying for a product, you are the product. So keep an eye on that when you are using different <clears throat> resources in the community. This final exercise is to get you thinking about how you feel your money how you feel about your money picture. The My Money Picture is a bonus card located inside the back cover of the paper copy or in the back of the electronic pages. Grab a pen and place an X over the areas you feel good about when you have time to work on this tool or circle the areas that you have concerns about. The first box is housing. Is your housing stable? Are you behind on your rent or mortgage? How do you feel about that box is how you will mark it. Look at the box for groceries. Are you experiencing food scarcity? Would you like to find out more resources on discount or free food? This is a good way to get you to start looking about and thinking about the areas that you would like help in. If there's time later, we can come back to and identify the different resources that we have through financial empowerment with each of these areas. So we're gonna start with the closing here to see if you have any questions, please feel free to jump into that chat box again. And then here is the three ways again to contact Dakota County Financial Empowerment. Our direct phone number, our email address, or the website under search personal finance. And there is a place on the external website now where you can click to um, ask for us to contact you back for an, an appointment. Okay, Kate, how are we doing with the chat box? 
Well, it looks like Hawaii is um, getting started here. I'm just going to let everybody know that I did place the link for the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau's bill calendar within chat. Um, if you did not receive it, feel free to send me an email uh, via our financial empowerment um, at, at co.dakota.mn.us. I would love to send you any of those resources directly to you by email if you need those. Um, I will say that bill calendar, Heidi, is probably one of my favorite tools that I use with my clients. It does mm -hmm. such a good job of showing when income's coming in and when bills are um, or need to be paid and does a really good job of showing uh, when things get tight and when things need to be looked at to possibly address um, those due dates on those bills. So I will say that is honestly one of my favorite tools. Um, so that'd be the one that I would, I would download today for sure. Yeah. Um, also keep in mind uh, for these paper, co paper copies of this, you can also go to one of four locations at our Dakota County Libraries to pick those up. Heidi, do you just wanna refresh where you can pick one up at? Well, now I'm gonna have to remember. Uh, Westcott, <laughs> Inver Hills, Inver, Inver. Um, Pleasant Hill, which is in Hastings, Farmington, and Egan Libraries. Yes, and we've also posted a link to the digital copy as well. If you uh, are a non-paper person and would just like the digital copy, um, either are great resources and tools to use in your everyday life. Um, so I have a really good question coming in right now. Do you have resources to deal with paying back taxes to the IRS? So that is one of the areas that Heidi and I um, do not work in is taxes. Um, we do a lot of great work in other areas, but um, IRS is, or tax questions is one area we do not work in. Um, usually we have resources that we recommend, which would be prepare and prosper. Um, if you'd like to reach out to us directly via email, I could get you their contact information to connect with prepare and prosper. Any other ideas on that one, Heidi? Other than getting yourself set up on a payment plan and then um, having that set amount to get that debt paid back, we can help you work that into your budget. Good thinking, yep. Anybody else have any questions out there that we can help answer today? <laughs> what is your email? Good question, yes. So it's financialempowerment at co.dakota dot mn dot us. We can also be reached to at 651-554-5763. And it looks like that uh, Mel has done an awesome job of putting uh, in the chat the link to our page as well with Dakota County. Thanks so much, Mel, for getting that in there. I appreciate it. All right. Well, we really appreciate you guys taking the time today to meet with us to go over this tool from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and knowing that there are different resources out there for almost anything that has to do with money because really kind of the only thing that you can do without needing money possibly is to think and everything else we've got some tools and tricks of the trade to help you with. If that is um, learning how to establish credit, repair credit, build credit, um, we know that credit, having good credit affects the cost of your car insurance to your homeowner's insurance, um, all the way up to the amount that you'll pay in case of an emergency when you do need to take out debt. One of our favorite things is to help people become mortgage ready and to be able to find the best deals um, and supportive programs for first time home buyers. So please reach out to us if you have any questions or if there's anything that we can support you with. Kate, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I just want to tell everyone, thank you so much for joining um, us today, and we are here to help, um, so please reach out. We'd love to answer your questions and help you in the future how we can. Thanks so much, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Yes.